everybody, welcome back behind the bar this evening. Uh, tonight we're checking out a beer that uh, is local-ish to me. Um, has This brewery doesn't get a lot of hype on the national level, but I actually really, really like their beers. Um, so we're checking out Second Shift Brewing um, Liquid Spiritual Delight, which um, is kind of a shelfie around here. Uh, they distribute in Kansas City. They're out of St. Louis. Um, I don't know specifically... They're out of a suburb, technically, New Haven, which is a suburb of St. Louis. Um, they're actually just opening a new brewery, or a uh, tap room and brewery and everything. It's supposed to be badass. I haven't been to it yet or know anything, know much about it, but I've heard that it's awesome. But we're actually checking out a variant of this beer. Um, this is the uh, coffee version, non-barrel aged with blueprint coffee. Um, coffee is Cherry of Ethiopia, bottled in February. So this bottle comes courtesy of my man, Chris. Um, thank you very much, sir. Uh, we are going to check it out with you. Um, I will be upfront and honest with you. I've actually had this beer before. Um, I've actually had it twice. And the funny thing is, is the first time I had it, I thought it was insanely ridiculous. It was creamy. It was smooth. And the second time I had it, it was more bitter. So I'll be curious to see with a little bit more age on it, what this one looks like. I'm pouring this out cellar temperature. I'm already getting huge, huge coffee. Um, but pouring it out cellar temperature, we're gonna see what it's all about. We'll get a review on camera and I'll let you know my thoughts. Um, but Second Shift is, uh, they make some awesome beers. Uh, Katie um, is a fantastic kind of farmhouse uh, style ale that I think is awesome. They do some fruit variants that are awesome. Uh, barrel aged, the barrel aged vanilla version of this, I had at a bottle share not too long ago. It was money. So, anyways, let's check it out. Um, pours out pitch black cinnamon mocha head, cinnamon mocha head, about a finger um, of just that awesome dark mocha. Um, looks killer in the glass. Already getting some nice glass lacing. Uh, this is clocking it at 11 and a half, 11 and a half percent. Serve at 54. I'm serving at cellar temp, so we should be right. On one of my favorite things about their bottles is they are funny. Um, there's one that says for a good time and then gives their phone number, which I think is hysterical. Um, but, anyways, it looks killer. I mean, that's pitch black, guys. Pitch, pitch, pitch black. Um, already getting some glass lacing. Glass is completely clean there. Sorry about that. A um, little bit of alcohol legs. Looks killer. Let's see what it smells like. I mean, when I opened this and poured it, I could smell it. This is huge, huge, huge roasted coffee. Like coffee shop coffee. On top of that, this is huge chocolate as well. We're talking milk chocolate, baker's chocolate. Even a smidge of dark chocolate. But huge, huge chocolate, big coffee. I mean, big coffee. But it's not like green pepper, or like bitter smelling coffee. This smells more like what I remember the first bottle that I opened smelling like. Almost like a creamy coffee kind of thing. Like creams, like pour a little creamer in your coffee kind of thing. Big, dark roasted malt. Chocolate malt. Just big. This is a huge nose, guys. This is big. It, it's it tastes like a. It's I'm sorry. It smells like a big, big beer. It smells awesome. I can't wait to try it. Let's dive in, Chris. Thank you very much, sir. You are a scholar and a gentleman. Cheers. Now I'm going to preface everything that I'm saying. If you watch many of my videos, you know. I'm not a huge non-barrel-aged coffee style fan. Um, I tend to get a ton of like green pepper bitterness from it. And uh, I just think coffee is one of those things that if not used right, which most breweries don't, that it needs something to balance it out. It needs a barrel, it needs adjuncts, it needs something to kind of balance that bitterness out or else it can just get really off-putting. Um, and just overly, like, oddly sweet and bitter. I just don't like it. With that said, this is kind of in the middle. 
um, of the two that I've had. The one that I had at a bottle share that Chris brought, it was kind of like green pepper coffee. Um, it just didn't taste, there wasn't enough sweetness and there wasn't enough like creaminess and maltiness to balance that out. Um, whereas this has more of that, this is not quite as forward as that. There is a little bitterness to this coffee though. Mouthfeel is medium, medium plus. This is fantastic mouthfeel, great carbonation. Um, I do get this like kind of bitter coffee thing, but I also get like this creamy kind of aspect. It glides across my tongue. Um, I'm getting the chocolate malts, the dark roasted malts, the just the malt bill is it, it goes right into that creaminess. It's free flowing. It doesn't have that like dusty or it's not off putting. It, it just blends right into the beer. It's fantastic. But it does have a really really strong coffee finish. If you like coffee stouts especially like non-barrel aged coffee stouts, you would love this beer. It is very coffee forward. The chocolate elements carry over as well. Right up front, I'm hit with like this almost like malty, like milk chocolate note that kind of flows into this like baker's chocolate and then blends into the coffee. It's awesome. Very Ethiopian. I have no idea. Um, but there is a fair amount of coffee in this, and I do. I did talk to the brewer at Boulevardia, um, and he had said to me that uh, they do cold press their coffee, which is good because a lot of times that removes. I, I wouldn't even want to know what this tasted like if they didn't cold press it. But yeah, this is awesome. This is a fantastic beer, um, and even for me, not being a huge fan of coffee stouts, this is one of the better ones I've ever had. Um, you do get, like I said, you do get a little bit of lingering bitterness on the end there, but it's still really creamy, it's still really flavorful, it's full, this is a full, full body beer. Um, it's extremely well made. These guys are doing killer things. I will say, like, when Second Shift started, they're really poor opinion of them, because they had really bad variation problems. Um, but this, like, they've, they've honed it in, they've dialed in their craft over the last couple years, and they are doing some awesome beers. I have Cat Smith with Vanilla back in the back room, which I'm pretty sure is infected. Um, I've got Blackberry, Katie, and another Katie. I don't remember which one it is, but um, they make great beers, guys. I mean, if you've never had their beers and you see it out, pick up Katie or any of their Brett beers or anything like that. They're fantastic. Even Art of Neuroses is a pretty good double IPA or IPA. Um, <laughs> malts. But, uh, no, this is a great beer. I really appreciate Chris hooking me up with this. Um, I was really looking forward to reviewing it. I hope this bre this brewery is going to get bigger, guys. They are going in their new facility and everything they're doing. That you are going to hear more from them. They make a really freaking good beer. Um, in the St. Louis area, most people would put Perennial Side Project number one, right? Um, and some people would try and put like Four Hands and some other breweries number two. I would put them ahead of them, like for sure. Yeah, killer stuff, guys. Killer stuff. I don't know what else really to say about it. Um, as far as a grade, I mean, this is an A beer for me, for sure. Um, as far as world class, you're you're diving into waters I'm not comfortable with with coffee stouts because I will n I'm never really going to put a coffee stout as world class. Um, I think this is better than, like, this straight, I think is better than Bourbon County coffee. No, it's a different beer. It's barrel-aged. Um, but I would prefer this to that. So I don't know if that means anything to anybody. But, um, yeah, I know there's not a lot of these out there, I don't think. I mean, Second Shift is, when it comes to these beers, they don't brew and produce a lot of them. So, um, A beer, I'm going to go split it down the middle. I'm going to go 95 out of 100. Fantastic. I think it's great. I would definitely drink this again if I saw it on tap. I would actually, like, this is the type of beer I think would, like, begs itself to be on Nitro somewhere. I think it would just, like bump up the creaminess even more and just make this beer insane um but it's good it's awesome um yeah so we'll leave it there 95 out of 100 chris thank you very much for uh hooking me up with the bottle and uh yeah thanks for coming behind the bar everybody until next time thank you for the likes subscribes and comments cheers